Hello, Macy here. The spirit of Kerbin is drawing ever closer to its departure date, the lathe. And uh, to do that, I want to make sure we're absolutely chock a block full of fuel. So I'm taking up a large quantity of um, regular fuel and propellant here to fill her up. Piloting this ship is ED410, the new asteroid we're taking on board to perform various menial tasks. I use a lot of RCS with this setup because the fighters run on RCS when they get close to their target. So I go through it quite quick and um, I'm worried about being stranded out there in the great lonely black without propellant. So I want to be absolutely full to the brim here. So I've been working on some new fighters for this, the new Mosquito Mark IVs, um, complete redesign. And um, I'll show you why I've done this soon for the reloading device. But it can dock at both ends now. It has a, a port at both ends. And this is the LX variety, which is designed to be able to land on very low gravity worlds, such as some of the outer moons of um, Jewel, maybe. Every launch I do, I tend to redesign the rockets and the launch stages because it's best to learn. And I'm, I can use this to experiment with different types of ascent stages because it's not really important you know I just need to get things up there but this is me experimenting with using jet engines in a rocket type configuration it's just fun really I always try and use a different ascent stage each time so this is red 2 I've decided to keep two fighters on board the spirit of Kerbin now instead of the four before because I can use slightly more sophisticated fighters for the same weight and uh, part count, that all important part count. Um, so yeah, these are slightly more sophisticated and it's going to be easier to do engagements in future just running uh, two fighters because in the Battle of Vultures Drift running three, because one was disabled, running three was even a bit of a handful. So I just want to keep things more specialised and uh, Red Leader can have the LX which adds a bit more versatility. Hopefully we can land somewhere with that one. So let's get this on board. So here we are, Red 2, arriving at the Spirit of Kerbin, just folding away these solar panels as normal. The fighters for this ship have been constantly evolving, if you've been following the series, but they've been constantly evolving as things sort of go wrong, some things work, some things don't. And uh, the Spirit of Kerbin itself has been evolving, and as we've repaired her and added bits to her and take bits off her and stuff. But it's good, because I think now we're ready to go to Jewel and uh, to Lathe. But we wouldn't have got here if it wasn't for the constant experimentation with new loadouts and the trial of combat and so on. But I'm happy with how she is now and I didn't want to go until I was happy with it because out there there's going to be no help and of course no support vessel. So I've just stowed the torpedoes I brought with me and I'm just putting this fighter into its berthing. And I'll show you this new reloading device I'm talking about. This is why I needed a docking port at both ends. I noticed during that battle that I was very slow to respond. And uh, this is a much better way of reloading before I go. So very easily, I can just select the amount of torpedoes I think I'm going to need for the engagement and load them up nice and easily so I can just get out the door as quick as possible. And what's quite good about this arrangement is that I can also restow those torpedoes back in the same place once I've um, come and docked for the torpedoes I haven't used. So I think that's very convenient and much easier to do. Of course, I'm just using the um, mild push from the decouple and it will just go up in a straight line to where it finds another docking port and vice versa.
Okay, unknown ship on attack vector. Time to stop our grinning and drop our linen because I am not going to have the spirit of Kerbin damaged or destroyed having spent all this time getting her up to fighting shape. So a good opportunity to load these torpedoes as swiftly as possible and intercept that target before it manages to launch a strike on us like last time, completely unprepared. Clearly this is Hanland, up to its old tricks again. We've had no return ping from this ship, so it's obviously hostile. This time, it's not going to get a strike in before we get a strike upon it. Where Hanland has got this ship from, I have no idea. They must have been secretly developing their own tech. No doubt stolen from Spirit Wolf, with all their clandestine activities and their spying and bribing and so on. Time to take it out. Okay, it's looking good. It's nice and straight. I wanted to do is quite short range. And that's a hit! That's a hit. There you go. Didn't even get close. But wait a minute. Oh no, that hasn't been destroyed. It doesn't even look touched. We are doomed. Only the gods can save us now. He only managed to hit armour, which I know from experience is our best chance of survival. That side hit against that hull is a very resilient part of the ship. So I haven't got time to look at it now. First of all, I'm going to get after this ship. I've got one more torpedo. This needs to be taken out. This is a frightening apparition that's just turned up out of the black. And this needs to be taken out. Perhaps miraculously, it appears we took no damage whatsoever. No damage whatsoever. May the gods bless you, spirit of Curb, and you are a tough nut to crack. Excellent. Time for retribution. You can see my fighter pursuing it there in the distance. Red 2, this is your chance. Take down that fighter. It looks like it's fleeing back towards the planet, so we've only got one shot at this before it goes out of range. Looks like we're lined up against the engines this time, so hopefully we can cripple it. Get the range nice and short so I don't miss. It's a smaller craft than most. And... That's a hit! Surely, oh look at it slewing off to the side there, that was a heavy hit. But, it's still in one piece. I don't believe this ship. This ship is tough. This ship is tough. This could be the end of the Spirit Wolf Corporation as we know it if more of these start flying around. Because I cannot destroy this ship. Look at it, it's untouched. I don't believe it. Okay, time to go back to the Spirit of Kerbin. With my tail between my legs. Well, to be honest, at least it didn't destroy us or even hurt us. And uh, we couldn't destroy it. So no damage on either side. But if that was meant as a warning shot, it, I've certainly taken heed. Because if that pilot had more experience and knew where to aim that torpedo salvo, we would surely have been dead. So we need to develop some heavier weapon tech as soon as possible to deal with that fighter, whatever it was. Leaving for Lave hasn't come one moment too soon, to be honest. It's going to be more of a flee to Lave at this rate. But anyway, let's get Red Leader on board as soon as possible now. And um, we can get out of this system once and for all and uh, plan our next move. So just dropping the spare tanks there and uh, burn out to intercept. If you've noticed, I put lights, I put um, floodlights on the front of these ships. And they work quite well from quite a range. They really do light up the area. So when we're out there on the rim, these may come in handy, docking in darkness or mainly for aesthetics, of course. You know me. 
but I think it's quite nice having some sort of illumination. Maybe it will help with salvage missions. Who knows? So just stowing the torpedoes he's brought with him above his berthing. And he'll bed down himself for the long journey. I don't really want to take any more torpedoes than that. That's three each. But I need to keep the weight down and the part count down for this journey. So here it is. I've kept this attached at the top, this fuel tank, because I wanted to refuel everything, even the fighters, before I went. But now we've had enough of that. So get rid of these empty fuel tanks and get Ed 410 on board. I'm not sure how the rest of the crew are going to feel about having a synthetic amongst them, but I'm sure they'll learn to live with him. He's very useful after all, doing all the manual labour, so the ships don't have to do it. He's just restowing all the torpedoes here into their proper place and um, making sure everything is ship shape and Bristol fashion before we sail out into the black. And I want to get the balance as good as I can here. It's not quite right. There's going to be more weight, slightly more weight, weight on the bottom of the ship, I think, but it shouldn't be enough to actually unbalance it considering the overall weight of the craft. So that's 410's work done and he's going back to recharge. And so now for the final support vessel, I'm sending up another Gladius because we have a extra crew member on board that shouldn't be there because we lost one fighter, may the gods bless his soul. But we have two more fighters on board, so we have one extra crewman. So it's going to need to take them off and take them back. I brought an extra stage with the um, Gladius this time because I needed, believe it or not, a little bit more fuel just to fill up my last tank. And then we really are 100% full of fuel. So let's get this pilot out. He was only a courier really, delivering red leadership. But now he can go back to Kerbin, to the safety of Kerbin. Of course not all of Spirit Wolf employees are up for being away from home for years on end on these big interplanetary missions. That fighter shared a lot in common with the Gladius, so no doubt where they got the idea for that from, even the plans, but there you go. I don't know if you noticed, but I actually parked Red Leader's ship upside down. I'm sure you noticed, but I think I've mentioned before I am a bit of an idiot and I do overlook these things. So luckily I noticed and I'm going to turn him round. Otherwise we're going to be loading torpedoes to his rear and that's not going to help anyone. So get him back the right way around and here we are done. We are ready to leave. Everything's stowed, everything's ship shape, everything's strapped down. It's looking good. Give this episode a like or subscribe or comment. Um, all of your support is very much appreciated. And join me again for the next episode. And uh, bye for now.